Live from the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Kelly. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE. We are live in Las Vegas for Splunk's conference, annual conference, dot conference 2014. The hashtag is SplunkConf, C-O-N-F. Of course, go to crowdchat.net slash Splunk conference if you want to join the conversation. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media. I'm joined with the number one big data analyst, Jeff Kelly at Wikibon. Our next guest is Gary McCoola, Senior Director of Information Security at FINRA. Welcome uh, to theCUBE. Hi, I'm glad to be here. So love, love the title. <laughs> Information security. Security is the hottest thing on the planet. And, but there's so much involved. I mean, detection, pattern recognition, it's data driven for sure. It is. What are you guys doing? Give us the update on you, what you guys are doing with security, the company, the role of security, and the role of data. So, uh, security in general is, uh, is something that our company takes extremely seriously and that we put a lot of emphasis on. And what we found is, at least using Splunk, is it gives us the ability to do better analytics on, on pattern matching than we could ever do before. Plus, traditional SIMs don't, haven't allowed us in the past to be able to go back and look at, his, at mounds and mounds of historical data because their backends were limited on how much data you could put there. What kind of examples on the, on the patterns that you guys identified? I mean, because we've heard this before as a use case, killer mm -hmm. use case for security is, hey, you know what, there's so much data, a lot of real time, whether it's credit card transactions here or there for e-commerce, to just attacks or internal stuff. Yeah, not to get just into... I mean, you don't need specifics. Not to get into specifics. Yeah, I mean, not but, in terms of breaking any confidentiality. But here's, the, here's, what, here's what's missing on many of the tools, is you have a zero day, and then you get a dat file for it that addresses that. And now, I, now I've stopped the bleeding. Anything new coming in, I can stop or I can detect. But what happens to this period here, or prior to that? I don't know if, if I've actually been hacked by that zero day item. I need to be able to go back and do those analytics to see if that was addressed. And Splunk gives us that ability. And you've also got to store all the data, because when you're going to do all this analysis for your business, you know, there's all kinds of analysis on data. And you guys aren't new to data, so, it's so, so explain the transformation that oh. you guys have seen, so because Timing, real time, new data sets, new formats. Can you share some highlights of this transformation? Yeah, so big data in general, FINRA is not uh, uh, a stranger to. We were big data way before big before data was big cool. Data, yes. So we have to You're take the big in, data granddaddies. We do. We have to take in all the data for every transaction that was made on every stock market that's done in the United States. So this became a real natural fit for us when we, when we looked at it. So when we looked at what the shortcomings were for our, additional, uh, for our traditional SIMs, they were all addressed by what we saw at Splunk. I went to a Splunk conference, uh, Splunk USA, con uh, Washington DC conference, and I was just mesmerized by the excitement and, the, uh, and how thrilled everybody was about this product. And as I drilled down deeper into it, I could see why. You know, a lot of people, and you guys, what you guys do, just for the folks out there, I mean, looking at the capital markets and protecting investors is really a key thing. I mean, everyone thinks of, you know, that scene in Wall Street where, you know, Bud Fox is making the trades, or, you know, Enron crisis, you know, people going, you know, all this stuff's happening, so you got to watch a lot of real fast data. So you got historical, you got real time. It is. I mean, you guys are the perfect storm of, like, the people with the biggest need. And how do you do it? How do you keep up to date? Well, it's not easy. So, yeah. trying to keep up uh, with all the threats that, that are coming in is something that I don't think we'll ever, or at least right now, that we'll ever be able to keep up with. Uh, I was just telling Jeff the story that on 60 Minutes, the head of the FBI said that there were two types of companies, those that were hacked by China and those that don't know that they were hacked by China. So that tells us that we have to have a different paradigm. We can't put up these walls and feel that we're impenetrable and that we're uh, untouchable. 
The idea is, is that you can't sit down and put an IPS or an IDS up and think that that means that you're safe. You've got to continually go back and continually monitor and continually monitor your old data to see if you were hacked. You could be hacked just for saying China's hacking, so watch out for your... Uh, <laughs> I'm just, that, was a, that was a direct quote. <laughs> you so. were quoting somebody else. No, but I love that quote. I mean, that is so true. There's a security issue at many levels, but also it's the data. I mean, I mean, for the folks out there trying to wrestle their arms around it, what does Splunk bring to the table? I mean, can they be that good that fast? I mean, how are you guys using Splunk? Uh, that's a good question. So, we decided to leverage the Splunk cloud solution, and the reason we did that is we wanted to get to market really fast. The idea is, is that I have security engineers and I'm not really leveraging them to their full potential if we're worried about back end. So I let Splunk worry about the whole black back, back end. So we started in February and within two months we had every Unix and every Windows server logging their data to Splunk. And we were immediately started to see dividends from that. So things will naturally bubble themselves up if, you, if you're just uh, inquisitive enough to look for it. And that's what Splunk brings to the table. If you have people that are, uh, where their job is to look for things, Splunk will actually bubble that up to the, uh, to the forefront. Obviously with such a fast moving environment in terms of security threats, yes. you've got to be very nimble yourselves. Um, I wonder, does, does Splunk's ability to, we heard in the keynote about Splunk customers actually building applications on top mm -hmm. of Splunk. Being able to, one of the keynote, one of the customers that spoke in the keynote talked about Hunk being, uh, Splunk being very a very hackable platform. And meant that in a good way in the sense that we can go in there and actually yes. uh, create new applications, we can iterate on old applications and, and to adjust to new uh, changing business conditions. In your case, finding and uh, adapting to new security threats. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you actually use some of those capabilities? What's your use we of do. Splunk so, in terms of the application development side of it? So let's talk about uh, cloud in general. So we do leverage cloud, um, the ability to take roles and to apply permissions to those roles to ensure that people who use our cloud service can only use those services. So the issue is not really of putting a piece of firewall there to say whether this uh, API was called or not called or allowed to be called or not to be called. The big, the big heart of the problem is to ensure that the permissions that you've defined are exactly what are applied into the permissions in the cloud. And that was something that we did not find in the marketplace to be able to do. And we built an application to do that, leveraging Splunk CloudTrail, and we now have real-time uh, continuous monitoring of our permissions in the cloud, and we get notification if anything ever happens uh, that, to change that security posture. Mm -hmm. So the ability to, to do those kind of, to, to make those uh, adjustments and to build your own application, is that part of the value that you see Splunk providing? And how much, you know, we're here at the show, there's a lot of excited customers here. How much does the Splunk community um, benefit a customer such as yourself? Uh, uh, it's tremendous. You can usually find answers to whatever you want just by Googling it. And so th that is a, a, big, a big thing. The other thing that we talked about uh, on the opening um, addresses was that Splunk was an all-in-one box. And what we've seen is we're able to quickly get these apps up that we need very, very quickly because the whole computing environment is there. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're looking at is to be able to look at our entitlement data. So when people go to our websites and everything, we want to be able to log all the positive connections. It's going to address marketing, it's going to address security, it's, it, there's a number of areas to do that and the ability to put these applications up in weeks or months uh, compared to very long lead times is just a tremendous big win for Splunk in uh, FINRA's environment. Mm -hmm. um, so as John mentioned, you're kind of, you, you've been in big data for, before it was called big data. We did. So, so you've, got a more, you've got a historical perspective you could potentially share on the, the, the evolution of kind of the underlying technology used to support quote unquote big data. So mm -hmm. Splunk is certainly part of that, but we've also, seen kind of from the, from the 90s, the evolution from the EDW and towards traditional BI, and now we're seeing new systems and new approaches like Hadoop and other things mm -hmm. uh, that, are, that are potentially more scalable, leverage open source and commodity hardware, that kind of thing. 
how, what's your take on the evolution of those kind of technologies and the relationship between, you know, the, uh, for lack of a better term, kind of the old model of more structured EDW and BI versus some of the new, more flexible models that we're seeing now. Do you see them, uh, is there a tension between the two? How do you see the two living? Are they going to be live side by side? Is, is the new way pushing out the old way? What's your take? Well, the st structured data in general just, uh, the word structured in general uh, defines some sort of, uh, of boundary points. And unstructured data actually takes that away. So that's, th that's a big positive. But what the biggest advantage that unstructured brings is it allows us to ingest anything into Splunk. So traditional sims, big database, they have to understand exactly every single piece of data that comes in beforehand. So a piece of data comes in, he matches it. If he can't match it, he throws it to the bit bucket, which is something you never want to do. But uh, some, many people deal with small vendors. It's not profitable for some of these sim vendors to create parsers for all of these different tools. So unstructured was for us definitely the way we wanted to go. Plus we wanted to bring in application data that is done by application teams that don't necessarily follow a format. Uh, that we would, would be able to parse. We're able to bring that in really, really quickly. So the advantage Splunk has is it's specifically geared or engineered or architect for time series data and for small bits of time series data. It works really, really well. Hadoop has usually really big block sizes that, uh, that make it either it has to wait before it can buffer that data or, so it fills that buffer up, or you get a lot of empty buffers. They're working to address those kind of shortcomings, uh, maybe to, uh, to deal with Splunk, but it, right now, nobody actually handles that type of data feeds the way Splunk does. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what's your take, just generally, taking a step back, we've got a lot of, you know, our audience are, are thinking about um, you know, new approaches to not just data management, but analytics and actually becoming more data driven. What, in your opinion, what are some of the key characteristics of a company or an organization um, a, that successfully leverages data? Uh, what are some of the, both either technology or also culturally, mindset wise, what are some of the key characteristics that you think are important for a data practitioner to have to really be successful? Yeah, that's a good question, and I think part of it is culture. And we spoke about it at the uh, opening meeting. Somebody used the quote that uh, if, if your opinion isn't based on data, then you're just another guy with an opinion. And it really comes as a culture that whether your cult the culture of your organization is based on numbers or it's based on gut. And when you go to meetings, and you're able to bring this data with you to show exactly uh, the reasoning behind your story, that the data tells your story, I think that uh, that gets much more well received than to say, I think it's better this way. And uh, I think Splunk is an excellent tool to provide that, and we're seeing that uh, through all layers of our organization. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about Splunk a little more in terms of the company and, and your take on how they're developing. So they've come a long way over the last several years. Sure. They're growing like gangbusters when you look at their, you know, their quarterly filings. Um, but they're investing a lot of that revenue back into the business. Um, what's your take on their strategy? We heard Godfrey Sullivan talk about some of the things they're investing in going forward. Mm -hmm. um, talked about mobile first, talked about cloud automation, and really a very ambitious agenda, analytics for everybody. Sure. Um, what's your take on how they're developing and where they're putting their resources? Um, I think he's, de he's definitely on, top, on point. Uh, these are, those are the main, um, he actually came to our organization and talked to us, just like he did with many, many other organizations. He heard what we were saying. I think that's really important. Uh, he heard and he made those the priorities. So I see our priorities reflected in what his uh, R&D priorities are and that makes me comfortable as a, cu as a customer that they'll be able to meet, meet our needs in the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, do you have any concern, and certainly as you grow, as a company like Splunk grows, and, and they're known for their customer support, their listening to customers, just as you mentioned, is there any concern that as they grow, they're going to potentially lose some of that customer focus? Do you have any concerns? I mean, what, what, what is top of mind for you in terms of, you know, if you're talking to Splunk, these are the things that are most important to us, and we need you to keep your eye on the, on the ball when it comes to uh, these customer issues as you grow? 
Well, we t uh, I think he talked about, uh, Godfrey talked about uh, addressing the TCO model. That is uh, a little barrier to take. I think, in general, there's a dichotomy of Splunk can ingest anything, so we just throw everything at it. I think it's really important for administrators or owners of Splunk to ensure that we put our data on a diet, that we actually do our analytics on the data, and actually that we manage our own costs. So I think that he's going to help us out a little bit in that area <laughs> but by providing applications that help us manage that. I think that's what they're seeing. If you just throw everything indiscriminately at it, you have no one to blame for, that up, for the high cost <laughs> but yourself. Mm -hmm. Gary, I got to ask you, I know we got a break on the segment, but I want to get one final comment sure. uh, out for you, let, let you get out, but also I want to ask you, what is, what is the culture of your view of the cloud? Obviously the cloud's great, it helps you get started quick, sure. but if um, you could talk to the, the Splunk guys, maybe on the product team, or as you see your future as a, as a user of cloud, what are you looking for? What's the preferred experience that you need to see to have a really great, amazing cloud product? Okay, so first of all, FINRA in general is moving towards the cloud. That is our CIO's direction, and that's the way that we're moving. So, in, in one point, uh, a lot of resources for on-prem won't be there to support that. So, we moved uh, full board to go ahead. But what do I expect? I expect them to take care of that back end just like it was my back end and they, I need them to be able to treat my data with the same feeling or uh, the same care that I, that I would take it. And I also am expecting the 100% non-downtime that Praveen spoke of. That's a very lofty goal. But uh, just like the movie uh, Social Network, Facebook never ever goes down. That's exactly what I'm going to expect. It has little outages here and there, <laughs> some features like my, I know when the Hadoop cluster's not working because I can't see the comments on my mobile app, but that's <laughs> a different story. Um, but yeah, okay, just downtime. Anything else? I'll say pricing, variable pricing, pr consumption. Pr pricing is, uh, is, also, is always going to be a concern <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> well so. said, very political answer. Yeah, of course. But, but it's a consumption pattern for you, right? This is about consumption. It is. And pay by the drink can be paid by the drink all year long but then adding services in and out, right? Right, but you know what the cloud service does? It allows you to put an exact dollar amount on the data that you're ingesting. So, there's all kind of hidden costs when we talk about an on-prem solution. Uh, I don't know about your data center, but mine runs on electricity, but we rarely then put those costs yep. onto our boxes. But, with cloud, with Splunk Cloud, I can now put an exact dollar amount of what it's going to cost me to ingest the data feed and that, then the, we can make an, a, an informed yeah. business decision if that's a good, if you we know, need to go You should get involved way. in the Wikibon community because Jeff's actually doing some reporting on this right now uh, from research, it's all free by the way, um, to go to wikibon.org. We can but, afford that. Uh, it's free, is good. <laughs> free is shared too, it gets viral and it helps people. But the thing about what you're talking about is there's a lot of cost structures and how accounting was done with IT sure. that you know, it's got to be modernized. Absolutely. Because the consumption is different and the relationship and contracts are also changing. So you brought up a really interesting point that not a lot of people can, are quantifying in the scheme of the big picture. So um, awesome data point there. I want to expand on that a little later. Maybe, we'll, maybe we can talk offline sure. <laughs> about that. But love your experiences. And again, this is this is the world of everybody in IT right now. There's a massive transformation. It is. And the benefits are there. So that's the beautiful thing. You got the you got the leadership from the vendors out there making good products. The tech is working. Uh, the software is scalable. So well, some cases, but but for the most part, the significant benefits and flexibility. So. Absolutely. Gary, thanks so much, love talking with you. I think what you guys are doing is really the big challenge and with data is that it's real, it's out there, it's fast, it's, ev it's everywhere, and you guys are harnessing it and bringing that in and really at, at a really big clip. So congratulations. Uh, Thank and, you very uh, much. Your success story at Splunk is uh, awesome. So, so we are here inside theCUBE, live in Las Vegas, breaking down the big data world with Splunk's user conference, but also looking at the trends and trying to extract that for you. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back after this short break.